I'm going to venture to guess that there's not a person on here that does not know more about the technology related to online ministry today than they did two months ago. But there's always more to learn and there's always new technology being developed. We have uh, some great presenters who are with us today to help us navigate this wor world, to help us improve our online spaces. And so I'm going to start with Jim Carter and, uh, and ask him to share with us a little bit about his work in, uh, with two small rural churches. Thank you very much, Owen. Um, I'm Jim Carter. I'm with Custer Road United Methodist Church up in Plano. And um, we've been actually live streaming for between eight, eight and nine years now. So, um, and our production facility is, is on a, a larger scale. And so it's been, when I was asked to present today, I was a little bit concerned because I felt a lot of this was really trying to focus more on how to get everybody online. But like I, I told some people initially, everybody's got to start somewhere. And that um, the way I can relate to that, Jerry Butler, who has been um, on the staff here at Custer Road, is out at uh, Cottage Hill and Chambersville United Methodist Churches. And so um, when this all started, he came to me and said, how can I connect with everybody? And the, the easiest way for me to do that. Um, so I know a lot of you, some of you have already started with Facebook Live. That's the direction he started off initially and was and set up Facebook accounts with each church, did Facebook Live. And because of not having good internet connectivity at the churches, we basically said, use our prayer room here at Custer Road because we've got good Wi-Fi. It's a good stream, good connection. And he just did his services live at 930 and at 11 at his respective times for his, his church, just off of his iPhone. Um, and as things grew, um, he just determined he needed um, a, a microphone because for him, the sound was gonna be the most important thing. And so there, there's gonna be a list that um, Liliana is gonna be posting that has some shortcuts to several of these different suggestions that we have for equipment. And so some of the things that we've done for Jerry as far as, um, a lavalier microphone or a shotgun microphone that will interface directly with his phone, um, we've included in that list. Um, but it was Easter that made the big turn for Jerry and that he went out and did the recording in the sanctuary at each of those two churches, pre-recorded, um, shot on his phone, and then he edited that together with the rest of the liturgical aspects and the musical aspects, and then did the premiere of the video on Facebook Live for Easter Sunday. And that was the big turning point for Jerry because everybody loved to see um, him in, in the church as something familiar that they were wanting to see. And so he has now switched to totally going ahead of the time with recording everything in advance. So his, he's recording his sermons on Thursday or Friday, um, having his musical pieces um, Pulled together, and then he will edit. He has a he has a MacBook that he uses in just iMovie that he puts everything together, and gets it all set. And then he pushes that video up to Facebook, and then sets it to premiere at the time that's appropriate for the worship service, so that everybody can feel like it's a live event that's happening during their scheduled worship time. Um, and then he in turn also then pushes up to um, YouTube a copy of that, so that people could watch that back at a later time if, it, if YouTube works better. Um, so his biggest things um, and what we've included on the list for Liliana that we'll be passing along to all of you are the microphones that he's using, the, um, the tripod and stand that he's using for his phone. Um, and then uh, he's started to look a little bit at, um, at other options for um, how he's streaming and hosting and those kinds of things. And it's, um, he has not done much work. And to be perfectly honest, I, I'm not one that can speak to it, but maybe some of the other presenters um, that a church online platform.com is something that he's starting to look at now um, that because it does um, allow that you to have options for getting Bible verses and submitting some other things to be included within your uh, video that you put together as you push things up. So um, I just, kind of wanted to say that it's, I think for everybody, the biggest thing that you're going to have to kind of navigate as we go through this is 
what works best for you and what's going to be the best way to communicate with your individuals. And every, it's going to be a little bit different for everyone. And I, I understand that. And that's why this team's here um, to be able to help you as best we can. And that, um, I mean, I, I am always available um, for you to reach out to. If I can help you in some way, um, please don't hesitate to, uh, to contact me and we can make sure that everybody has those um, addresses at a later time because I'm certainly willing to help everywhere I can because it is definitely a change. Those of us in a large scale um, church right now where we've seen our numbers go up tenfold as far as the number of viewers and, um, and so making sure that we're hitting every option that we can to, to make sure that the stream is consistent, to make sure that everybody has that opportunity to see what we're doing and, and be able to participate and feel like they are still continuing to worship as a family. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna kind of just leave it as an opening for everybody here and um, that, um, Owen, I'll turn it back over to you for now if there's anything else that um, you need from me. I've got a, I'm actually in our control room right now. I've got a two o'clock live stream that we're gonna be doing here shortly. So um, I'm at least close by, um, but uh, I'll still be managing the, uh, and monitoring the, the chats. So anything I can do to help out as we go. Thanks, Jim. And if you can uh, put in your contact information that you, uh, since you offered uh, to help persons, if you can put in your contact information in the chat, people can capture that and, and then reach out directly, directly to you. All right, but thank you for that. Um, um, DJ, uh, we'll now turn it over to you. And uh, DJ's brought in some resources. I, I sent him some questions and um, suggestions ahead of time of what I thought would be helpful. And, uh, and so he has some resources he'll be sharing with you. And so appreciate you being here. All right. I'm extremely nervous. So uh, I'm just going to go over just kind of some different tiered stuff that I think would be helpful to kind of get you off the ground. Uh, hopefully you find some of this useful. Um, I'll try to simplify it as much as I can. So First off, my name is DJ. I'm the IT and communication director at Lovers Lane United Methodist Church in Dallas, Texas. Uh, we've been streaming for about a little over two years now. And if there's anything you need to know about live streaming, it's an ever evolving beast, just like anything um, digital. So you have to be prepared that once you get set up, that it's going to change months down the line. You're going to have to adjust it figure out what's working better, what's not working, and there's gonna be new technologies and eventually down the line, you might have to revamp everything as well. So you just gotta be prepared for that mentality. Um, so let me just go through a couple of different setups that I think would be beneficial. First off, if you're just starting out, if you have a relatively good cell phone connection at your facility, a cell phone can work great because the technology that's implemented into a lot of our devices now is really great audio and video. Um, so you can get something relatively good quality going just off of your cell phone device. It gets even better when, if you have a Wi-Fi connection um, just to help with the speed and the amount of data that you can push at one time. Um, but if you want to step it up just a little bit, like Jim talked about, a good tripod and a lavalier mic that you can hook up directly to your cell phone uh, can take you a long way. And let me just kind of show you what that looks like. Just a second here. And these links I provided to Liliana so you can see kind of the stuff that I would recommend using. So this is just a, your basic lavalier mic, which you connect to as close as you can to, to the speaker's mouth to pick up the best audio. You connect it directly to your phone and it, it'll provide a little bit better speaker audio, which is kind of what you're going for um, to pick that up. What I would also recommend uh, you have to pay attention to lighting and camera angles. You can see like in my setup here, um, I do a lot of live streaming from home and I have just two very cheap LED lights that I put some filters on um, just to kind of get the right shade that I like. And I put the camera angle up higher so it gets shadows underneath the chin so you can't see how many chins I have. Um, 
And so all those little things that you can adjust uh, can really step up the game just a little bit more. If you want to take it a step further, now this is really geared towards people that aren't doing in-person worship right now because um, once you go back to an environment where a room is filled with people, you're going to have to adjust where cameras are in the room. So you're going to need a little bit different equipment set up for that. But for this instance, if you're doing something from a pulpit, you have the opportunity to set uh, your cameras a little bit closer to the speaker, which will get better angles and better audio and video uh, quality to present to, uh, to the audience. So if the next thing I would recommend, if you want to step it up just a little bit more, is really just a simple webcam and, and this is more of your kind of, what is it? Um, like this setup that I have here would be just a basic webcam and Bluetooth uh, or a webcam and just a desktop USB condenser microphone. These microphones right here are set up to really capture good audio at like a certain distance, but it, it works really well for just talking like this. I have something similar to this, but it's just a little bit higher end, but this can accomplish a lot of the same stuff. Web cameras uh, have a lot more features rather than just built in um, to phone and built into your computer hardware. So you can get a little bit better quality and functionality out of those. And you can see this runs a little bit, um, this, this is affordable. This combo is just 120 on um, Logitech's website. And, and Logitech was good because the second that COVID hit, everybody bought webcams and they were sold out everywhere. Logitech did a really good thing to where they limit the amount of hardware that you can buy on their website. So if you need to get set up for a live stream simple, um, you can buy a limited amount of these, but they're available directly through them. So they've, They've done really good adjusting to this whole scenario that we're in. Stepping up from there, I would say your next bet would be to try and do uh, a nicer camera with a capture card. Um, my initial recommendation would, to be, would be to go for something that's versatile, not just for live streaming, but will also help you in your other digital content. So I, I'm not sure what the other tech guys would recommend, but for me personally, I would look into something mirrorless that has the option for a HDMI out, which basically means you can, sub, you can send your video feed from the camera to a computer through a converter. And so just a basic one that you'll see right here, this is a little on the higher end, but a, a mirrorless camera like this, like the Canon EOS M50, it, it gives you a good, digital video quality and it um, it does have the option to send a clean HDMI out which means that it can send a video feed without all the additional information on the screen that you usually see on camera screens um, and, but in order to send this to a computer so the computer can understand it you need um, a converter or a recorder they're, they're called different things from different providers but Something like this that basically says that takes the, you know, the signal from the camera in and then sends it out via USB to your computer. And so then once you've got that captured there, uh, and again, there's a couple of links for different types of these that can work for you in your setup. So hopefully, uh, and I can answer any questions about that. Let me see, lose my place a little bit. So the next, so, so once you've got this, um, I'm trying to think what I should go over next. My three-year-old was really chomping at the bit today. Um, so you, you can do it a couple different ways. Uh, the OBS project is a software that allows people to, where is it? Just give me a second. So OBS is a software that allows you to broadcast um, live streams to uh, 
any service that you sign up for. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's free to use. Uh, it takes a little bit of a learning curve to set up, but if you've reached this point, you, you might have the resources to be able to ask somebody how to set this up. Um, but basically you, you take the service like, like it lists below Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, you input those settings into OBS and then you can start streaming with that as long as your setup is, uh, is, is where you like it um, in house. And what we use, actually I'll go over some of the software that we use to send to different platforms. So we at LOUMC, we send to three different platforms. We send to YouTube, we send to Facebook, and we also send to, um, surprisingly enough, we do pretty well on it, is Twitch. And Twitch is actually a game streaming platform. They have a lot of good features for live streaming. Um, but primarily, we use it because it's got a pretty robust set of features for interactivity, as well as um, the player is easily embeddable um, on your website. And you can embed the chat as well. The problem with Twitch is you, you, you kind of get um, a younger set of individuals and sometimes those individuals like to troll a little bit. So you gotta be prepared to look out for that. Um, but I can answer questions on that if you, if you have any more about that. But how we send to these three platforms simultaneously is through a service called Restream. And it's restream.io. And they have some basic plans set up to where um, you can unlock uh, some additional features if you've got some higher end needs. But uh, they have a free tier that will allow you to send to most of the large platforms, which is what we do. We pay for a little bit extra and it's, it's really not that expensive. You can pay yearly or monthly. And I think it's like 12 bucks a month or so just to kind of get going there. And it offers a few features. It offers analytics. There's a chat feature. Um, and basically all you do is you input your server information, which is down here into OBS, or you can actually stream directly from a webcam. And then you just toggle on and off your different places that you want to stream to. So it's a really, it's a really great tool that we've been using to uh, broadcast our are streamed to multiple platforms um, because not everybody is using the same thing. Some people prefer Facebook, some prefer YouTube. And honestly, it actually helps when one of these services go down, we can redirect people to the other service. So, so if YouTube is not taking and Twitch is up, I can say, you know, try this link. If we're having some issues, technical difficulties here and there with, with whatever service that's given us the most trouble. And, and that's another thing, something is always going to break. So just, you gotta be prepared for that and just keep a cool head most of the time. Cause for me, it's intimidating in a live situation. Um, if something goes wrong easily to get overwhelmed and, and kind of take the wrong step, but you just gotta take a breather and move forward as best as you can, um, fixing the problems that arise as they come. Another thing that I wanted to share for online engagement, and this has been a really great tool, and if you're not using website chat, uh, I think it's a great way to interact with individuals who are watching you live. Chatra uh, has been a great tool for us, uh, engaging with people who just visit the site during a live stream and also just anytime throughout the day. I'm online with it right now, and uh, we get messages throughout the day, throughout the week, people just asking anything and everything about the church. Um, but I actually kind of want to show it to you real quick. It's, it's kind of neat. So if you go to our website, lumc.org, you can see that it pops up a chat option in the bottom. So you can see that I'm online and let's see. So it tells me that I've got a new message and I'm in there and I can respond. Um, this has been a really great tool for answering questions on the fly for people that, especially our members who are a little bit older and don't uh, understand the technology that much, they can understand that that uh, functionality allows them to talk to a real person. So when we're doing a live stream, 
a lot of times I'll get a question, where do I access it? Why isn't the volume working? This, this or that is not happening for me. So how can I fix that? And I easily help them through here, say, try this, try this link, check these settings. Nine times out of 10, help them out. Uh, that 10th time, they just call me a jerk and leave. Um, I think really that's, that's all I got. I kind of put this together quickly. I, ho I hope some of it was useful. Um, if you have questions, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer. I work with a, a, a team of people as well who some of them are, actually most of them are much, much smarter than me. Um, and we just kind of work together. We do have some volunteers. Uh, I have interns that I get during the summer and a lot of them are in high school and they're all smarter than me. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I got. Um, well, DJ, I don't know why you're nervous. You did a fantastic job. And so we thank you, uh, for your help with that. And I know that, um, Kyle's brought some information and was also paying attention or also following a little bit, some of the questions that are being posted. And so DJ, if you can kind of go through the, the chat over there and start looking at some of those questions, we'll bring you on, uh, We'll bring you back after Kyle and, and we'll, we'll try to get these questions answered and may move to a, a panel format after that. But I do thank you for your presentation. And now uh, take it away, Kyle. Well, how's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Kyle Fote. I'm the uh, Communications and Technology Director for St. Andrew United Methodist Church in Plano. Um, so very similar to Jim and DJ, uh, we, we have a larger uh, set up with uh, multiple PTZ cameras, a couple of manned cameras, that kind of thing that run into a, a large control room, similar to what Jim's got sitting behind him. Um, so that's what we normally run um, on a weekend. Uh, but for our, when we've moved into what we call COVID times, we've adapted a lot to the scenario and we've adapted a lot to allow, you know, just our, our pastors to be able to do children's ministry from home, student ministry from home, adults, uh, connection groups, things like that. So I'm going to uh, touch base on a couple things like that, that we've uh, kind of given tips and trips to for each section um, and kind of go from there. So first is really going to be um, the decision of whether you're going pre-recorded or live. So um, Jim referenced that earlier, how uh, there's some that's just completely live and there's some that's completely pre-recorded. Uh, and I would actually argue that we do a hybrid of that. So uh, similar the live option gives you uh, fully live. It gives you that energy of being in the moment, uh, but it also gives you that energy of, oh, hey, look, you know, Bob Smith joined us this morning. We're so glad you joined us. It gives you that community, that connection point. You can give a little bit of a shout out if you need to, um, but there are no redos. So you kind of get one shot at that and um, you kind of take one go at it. And over time, similar to every sermon you've given when you first started out, it might've been a little rough, but as you practice that, it gets better and better and you take it with one shot. So the second would be uh, recorded, a fully recorded service that you go back. And uh, I've seen some questions about some video editing software. There's tons of them out there. They range from free all the way to thousands of dollars to monthly subscription. So uh, for instance, uh, we use in-house um, Adobe Creative Suite. Uh, so we pay monthly for that. Um, and we get a lot of powerful tools, but we do pay monthly for that. Uh, whereas you could use um, iMovie, you could use Windows Movie Maker. There's some easy, simple uh, connection points that you can use that are built in natively to your computers. Uh, that if you get a handy cam, capture yourself, uh, and then put those in order, uh, those kind of things are going to work. You even can do that on your phone or your iPad often. Um, there's some built-in native apps there. Um, so it really boils down to the point of broadcasting. And the point of broadcasting is, in my opinion, is to spread the message. So uh, you, you're gonna wanna make some choices. Is, that, is the point really to, be, to share that community, to be in that place, um, or is it to share just the word itself? And so um, that's gonna drive a couple of things. And so, you can mix that a little bit and that's what we end up doing. So for our contemporary band, they record everything at home. Uh, they mix that down and then they send us a file. And so what we'll end up doing is we just play that file back via ProPresenter. Uh, and then we then in live in venue, we'll have Arthur 
do his sermon live. So he does his sermon live three times every weekend. So we'll play a video and then Arthur will go live and then we'll play a video and we'll say something. And so we do a little bit of a hybrid. Uh, and you can do that too with pretty easy, simple things. Um, DJ mentioned OBS. Uh, OBS will let, let you have multiple um, sources come in. Um, there's one that we often use um, for our pastors. It's called StreamYard, uh, and you can find it at StreamYard.com, uh, and I'll post that in here in a little bit. Um, it's a great resource uh, for free. You can um, have that. It'll, it'll have their little bug at the bottom, but you can broadcast to Facebook. You can broadcast to YouTube. Uh, you can broadcast to several different places. Uh, and then for, I believe it's 20 or $25 a month, you can actually white label it. So you can go in and put your church's logo on it. Uh, and you can also do uh, additional sources, additional input. So you can throw some graphics on there. Uh, you can throw your scripture reference on there. You can show uh, a variety of little things like that that are just helpful all the way around to spreading the word. So that way it's not a talking head the whole time, but you have a variety of talking head with graphics uh, mixed in. So uh, StreamYard will do that for you. StreamYard also is really cool if you're trying to do webinar kind of things uh, and having maybe you have an associate pastor that you want to do the welcome and announcements or you have the worship leader that you want to be able to do that from home. You actually all can be at home if you wanted to and send out links very similar to Zoom, but instead of getting the grid format, you can kind of lay it out um, in like A and B left and right kind of stuff. Uh, think of Jimmy Fallon type of interview. Uh, where you've got, you know, person over here and person over here. Uh, StreamYard for about 25 bucks a month will allow you to do that from uh, a pretty reasonable camera source. Uh, I know one of the questions that's come up is whether to use um, an outbound camera uh, or like a portable camera, like a webcam, or whether to use an actual uh, in your computer, like just built in camera. So I'm actually using my MacBook Pro camera. Um, but I've also used, we send out the Logitech 920 uh, camera, and that's what most of our pastors use because there's some settings like brightness, contrast, you can really hone in on the image that you're looking for. So as you're focusing on that piece, um, so it really boils down to, let me jump back one, sorry. Um, Pre-recorded versus live. That's gonna be situation by situation. It's gonna be, um, do you feel like it's better to give your sermon from your house? Or do you feel like it's better to be in the church so the church, your church members can see the choir loft, they can see the piano, those familiar things that make them feel like they're at church, even though we're at this time where we're not. So that's gonna drive a large percentage of stuff, uh, whether, in, in my opinion, whether that's pre-recorded live or some semblance of hybrid. The next, major component I, I think you need to think about is environment. So for instance, I'm in my office uh, at the church. And so um, I've, it depends on whether you want it set feeling. So you want a look like this. Do you want a look that is um, in the church? Uh, like I said, it depends on how you want that feel. Do you want it to be an intimate personal conversation in your home? Or do you want that to be uh, at your church? Either one of those are doable. Um, I'm sure DJ and Jim have both done both sets, depending on which pastor they're doing, which Sunday we're doing, how, what service we're, what service type we're trying to do. Uh, it may be different for traditional than it is for contemporary versus students versus children. Uh, depends on what your audience is. Uh, I think the main things that I always tell our pastors for on environment is simple is better. Don't, don't try to overcomplicate your background. We all want HGTV homes, but sometimes we don't get that. And that's okay because in the end, the congregation knows who we are. They go to church because they love you and they love your personality. So having, you know, a wicked cool background or a setup may feel inauthentic to them. In this time of craziness, I think a lot of people are just looking for authenticity. They're looking for the real. Uh, they're looking for the reliable. And that's you. So your environment portrays that. So um, one of the other things to bounce off of rely, uh, of environment would be lighting. So we've talked a little bit about that. And in the, one of the links that uh, Liliana is going to send out, it has a, um, a ring light um, in it. And 
you can run the gambit from LED lights to ring lights to natural light, which is what's coming in this window, uh, to full on stage lights. And those, it really just depends on your budget. It depends on the room. Uh, I would probably say that most production guys are gonna say, close every blind, turn every light off that's exterior because you can't control it. Um, and the reason we say that is you really want consistency. So fortunately, it's a beautiful day outside. There's not a cloud in sight. And so the light that's coming through my window is just very consistent. Uh, whereas a couple of days ago when it was um, when it was a little bit more cloudy, uh, I was on a call and I could see that, you know, I was going from really bright to really dark to really bright to really dark. And that becomes a distraction. Um, and I think that's one of the other main things beside to kind of wrap all pieces up is you're really aiming to create a safe, distraction-free place. A place that they can just focus on the message, focus on the music, maybe just take a minute to slow down and breathe and feel like, you know, this is, this is comfortable. Uh, this is where I feel safe. Even if it's through a screen or through a television, it's, it's a place that they can know that they're loved and that they um, is consistent from week to week. So um, those are kind of my big high hit pieces. I wanna kind of get to some questions that we had um, on all of that, but really for me, it boils down to just that consistency, that environment um, and what works for your congregation. Um, I think Jim said it best early on, every single piece um, is gonna be different. Every environment, even from our students to our children, pastors, they're gonna present in a completely different way and make it your own, own it. Um, and whether you have $20 to do your stream or $20,000, um, it's really about the message. It's about you uh, and about giving the congregation this time of hope. Um, and somewhere in there, there's definitely technology. There's definitely right and wrong ways to get out there and to have the right piece of software, whether that's just straight to Facebook Live, whether that's through OBS, whether that's through live stream, all of those things are important. But in the end, getting that message out is the most important and focusing on that. Because one thing I will reiterate with DJ's piece is something's always going to break. Every, I, I can't imagine a Saturday or a Sunday I haven't gotten a call or a hey, this just isn't working. And a lot of times it's super simple, just need to reboot something, need to you know, plug a different cable in, but it's always gonna be a little bit of a distraction and trying to truck through that and uh, have that patience is probably the most important thing out of all of this that we can do. So, uh, oh, and that's kind of what I had for now. Um, I guess we can kind of, if you wanna cut back over. I appreciate that, Kyle. Uh, yeah, we're now gonna switch kind of to panel discussion. Uh, our present our 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 uh, experts, or as we affectionately called them, our geeks, have been reading your question on the side, and so now we're just going to allow them to to start answering those. And I want to encourage you all to stay on, and because if your question you don't feel like it's adequately answered, or if you have a follow up or something like that, or if there's something you want to share, we'll be opening it up as we go along. But right now, um, I'm. Um, I'm going to ask Jim, Kyle, or DJ uh, in the answer, in the questions that they've been seeing along the chat, if there's some of those they can start addressing for us. So I'll turn over to Jim. Yeah, I think um, a lot of what I'm seeing, it's, it's interesting. Um, every, like I said, everybody's a little bit different. Um, I, what I can speak to, we're actually using um, churchstreaming.net or church streaming TV for our, um, our streaming service here at the church. We do, um, at the time that we stream um, out to them, we also hit our Facebook Live as well as um, YouTube Live at the same time. So we are sending those. The, the Twitch is an interesting situation that was brought up earlier. Um, so that's, uh, by DJ, that's, that's cool. Um, would not have thought to go that route, but what we noticed was the more people were getting on, the, the more traffic you were seeing. And so you needed to find a way to offload some of that traffic across different platforms. And so uh, being able to do that um, was great. Once again, that's all gonna depend upon um, the size of your church, size of your congregation, and what kind of um, aspect you're looking for. As far as what everybody's been saying, as far as equipment, um, 
I like what DJ brought up as far as the the Canon E50 um, and being able to use that as a nice camera. Um, once again, it, it it all comes down to budget. If you if you happen to have that that personal iPhone that you can do, um, or even another one that you have in your congregation that you could set up on a couple of different um, uh, tripods. There's even some software that's out there, and I'll I'll look this up and and hit that out here in a little bit. That allows you if they're on the same Wi-Fi network that you can actually do some digital switching from another little tablet or another phone. Um, that would allow you to get multiple angles um, to put things together. Um, but it's the, the biggest thing, um, like Kyle said, is it's, it's all about your message and it's, and it's really not about um, where you are because to his point, we do, we're a hybrid right now. Our modern is all recorded ahead of time um, over multiple sessions and everything's edited and it's just one video file that goes back. But our traditional, we're intercutting that with some live stuff from the sanctuary, music-wise, um, from a quartet, uh, from our organist, that kind of thing on the traditional standpoint, as well as somebody handling the, handling the liturgy. So um, it's, it's really just what works best for you as an individual and what you're trying to get out. Um, that's what I have at the moment. I will continue to look through here, and if I have something that comes up, uh, Owen, I'll get back with you. Sounds great. Well, I was uh, capturing a lot of the questions and I was private messaging the DJ, so I'll, I'll send it over to him. Uh, I just, I want to address the, um, the Twitch thing. Ben asked uh, what kind of audience we're getting from or, or what it unlocks. One of the main reasons that I like um, Twitch is, well, A, because it is a little bit younger audience and I think it's important to, to reach them and kind of get them integrated into the church because a lot of them are having that disconnect and it's and if we've got a good message and of community and connectivity I, I i think it's great to stream there what you have to be careful of is yes it is that younger audience and we do get some trolls in there every now and then so you have to have somebody at the ready as a moderator in chat to be able to stop that stuff before it happens and there's a lot of different features uh, especially in the moderation portion to be able to say you can't say this, you can't say this, you can't spam this, or, um, and it, you can have it look for specific things. It takes some tweaking. Another reason that I really like using Twitch is because it's a, it's a really robust um, streaming platform. They're ready uh, with servers and the service needed to ensure a good quality throughout uh your your production so we've rarely ever experienced a large lag time a decrease in quality it, it's usually very consistent compared to the other services like facebook and youtube which sometimes can have a little bit of trouble um and uh, the other thing that i really like about it is it only offers one uh embed code so in order to put it on your website it'll never change um, so it allows me to put it in multiple places without having going back to change the embed code. Like if we're using like a YouTube event um, and it offers a different link for us to put that somewhere. So those are the reasons that I really like it. Um, another service that I want to uh, suggest, and I, I don't know if we covered this, I was trying to answer questions, but if you have an opportunity, go check out uh, churchonlineplatform.com. Uh, They're a really great service that they offer a lot of functionality. We don't use them, and that on, the only reason we don't use them is because we do multiple services at the same time. So if you're doing that, you'll need separate accounts. But if you're just doing one service or two services in succession, um, this is a, a really great product to look into. It's, it's free. And it gives you a portal like this that where you can set up all of your streams. Um, you can set up your schedule. And what happens when you go live, it puts a countdown at the top. But when you go live, it automatically changes this page. And to the right, it offers uh, live chat along with your stream. And there's a lot of different feature sets built specifically for churches within uh, Church Online. Um, like separate 
conversations for a prayer request. You can have a moderator chat. You can promote people within your congregation to be moderators uh, and facilitators within this platform to answer questions, take prayer requests, pray specifically with people, all online. It's, it's, it's a very interactive, it, it's geared a lot towards interaction on a live stream. So if you haven't checked out Church Online uh, platform, I, I recommend checking that out. This is our little portal for it, and we haven't used it. This is like four sermon series ago. Uh, ben also asked if the Twitch stream can be embedded into the church website. It can, yeah. It's uh, I mean, we've we've got it there for one of our services. And does like the chat that happens in Twitch also somehow get displayed on the church's website? It does. You have to embed that separately. So here's our chat to the right, and here's the embedded player to the left. The only thing about it is it shows Twitch down there, which is not a big deal to me. I, I don't mind people knowing that we're there. It also tells people if they have a Twitch account that they can go there and, and follow. Do you mean to be sharing your screen right now or not? I am not seeing anything. Oh, I'm sorry. This is what I'm talking about. So you got the, the chat over here. It does require them to have a Twitch uh, account in order to chat. Um, but actually through Restream, they offer a chat feature which uh, shows you a feed of all the services that people are watching and commenting with. So if somebody comments from Facebook, it'll pop up here, YouTube here. And it'll, I, give the, I give our pastors an iPad with this specific link so they can see all the comments. And as they come in, they comment and respond live specifically to people. So there's that interaction back and forth. And this portion is actually embeddable. So if you have this service, you say, uh, you just go to the embed thing. It gives you all the, you can change the look a little bit. And this portion is actually embeddable on your website. So people can see it right next to the live video and see the comments that are coming in. The only thing about this portion of Restream is it doesn't offer an, a way to actually engage in the chat. They have to be watching from one of those services and participating there. Cool. Uh, Kyle, I know you've been, uh, keeping up with some of the questions. Uh, yeah. So, uh, one quick follow-up is, uh, or takeaway is definitely multiple locations. So, uh, I didn't actually reference this, but, uh, we actually broadcast to Facebook live. Uh, we embed on our website and then we also send out a link for the actual direct embed code for livestream.com. That way, if for some reason we've got a ton of traffic on our website and it's slow or it's, uh, bogged down or Facebook uh, crashes, uh, there's multiple options. And so we send that out ahead of time. Uh, that's one of the key pieces, I think, is sending those links out so people have them ahead of time that when they get in that pickle, they have a, a way to find uh, those resources. Um, Yes, Liliana, I'll post that in just a second. Uh, and then uh, one of the questions was, uh, what are the best programs to show lyrics on video um, as is broadcast? Um, I think it would, we've ended up just using the same piece of software, ProPresenter. Uh, we're actually still on ProPresenter 6. Uh, for most of our stuff, we're beta testing 7. Uh, there's just enough bugs in it to make me feel uncomfortable to go full live um, on it quite yet. Um, Though it is really cool and there's lots of cool stuff coming down the pipe on it, uh, I think there's some kinks to work out still. So um, nonetheless, we use uh, ProPresenter uh, and then we run that into a switcher. I've seen several of you guys uh, talk about switcher app uh, or have some hard, uh, hard coded services that will allow you to take your camera in, whether that's HDMI or SDI, uh, as well as your computer itself. And then that way you can either do full screen or you can do uh, lower thirds, uh, lots of little pieces like that. So that would be what we use for lyrics. Um, sometimes if we're doing it live, that's definitely what we use for lyrics. If uh, we're going back and adding lyrics later on, we'll just do it in post, uh, either in whatever video software we're actually using. So we'll create a graphic, throw it at the bottom, and then render that video out and play that back um, is how, how we do lyrics. Uh, I will say one very, very important thing uh, on lyrics is uh, those are songs written by musicians and musicians have to eat too. Uh, so having the right licenses 
to be able to stream is very, very important. Uh, and there are a lot of licenses out there. So let me touch base on that real fast if I, if I can. Um, the main one that most people use, if you're basically living out of the hymnal uh, would, uh, or the supplementary, uh, using CCLI and having a streaming license. Um, hopefully everybody has a CCLI. We have it through the conference actually, if I remember correctly. Uh, but if you're streaming, then you will also need a streaming license, which is a couple of hundred dollars, but I don't remember because I only pay it once a year and I forget until I have to pay it. So my apologies. Um, and that will be scalable by congregational size, whether that's 20 people to 2000 people that price, but I think it's only a couple hundred even for 2000 people. So uh, that legally lets you broadcast uh, lyrics and hymns and pieces like that on, uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitch, uh, any of those places. The one catch that I will say is YouTube, Facebook, um, they're monitoring that all the time. And the one thing they're not monitoring is even if you have a little notice at the bottom that says my CCLI number is this and I'm completely legal, they'll might mute you at some point and you just have to go back and say, hey, no, I'm, I'm actually legal. Here's my license, um, all those pieces. So uh, there is one uh, that's a little bit more expensive and uh, I find it more often for contemporary um, that want to do more secular songs. Uh, and that is going to be uh, CC, uh, CCS, Church, uh, Church Copyright Solutions. Um, that's another one. So if you're doing more radio stuff, that kind of stuff, not necessarily in the hymnal, uh, that's covered by a lot of, a lot of the major publishing houses um, that's going to be um, copyright. Sorry, looking this location up for you guys. Um, there's going to be like BMI, a lot of the major major labels uh, they've got a good working relationship with them and then they also have a performance license and a streaming license so in covid time obviously you need both um in non-covid time or just uh live venue stuff uh you would just need one so um yeah and then liliana or someone asked uh does i believe that the north texas conference does cover uh ccli uh, for in venue, but not for streaming. I think we upgraded that. I think it was oh, like nice. a 30, I think it was like a thirty thousand dollar upgrade that we had to pay to be able to to be able to do that. And I, oh, gotcha. I believe Jody. Did, I remember her. I remember being in a meeting when Jody was discussing this, and I think she said she was going to go ahead and, and spend the thirty thousand dollars extra to be able to do that. So our churches can do that. So just uh, kind of to jump in, if you do have a questions about any licensing, please contact Matt um, in the Center for, I don't remember his digital, <laughs> Matt Jacobs. Um, so if you have any questions about that, whether your church is licensed or not, please contact him. He will give you all of that information um, because I don't know exactly and we don't want to say something that we don't have. So please uh, contact him. Don't tell him like, this is what Owen or Liliana said, just ask him nicely. And then, um, and then we can kind of get this all figured out. Yeah, Liliana's there to cover me in case I was just uh, getting everybody in trouble. But anyway, good advice. Other questions that need addressed, uh, Jim or DJ? Jim, you're on mute. That's what I get for hopping out of the window. Um, I said the uh, I noticed there was a comment about um, the North Texas Council having a uh, a CC uh, a CVLI, and that is something that is offered, but um, you have to sign up as the individual church and pay into that. Um, but uh, so that would be something separate. Um, but it is available once again going through the the conference office to uh, to determine what's um, available and what what you'd be able to have. But I know that we also have that CVLI for the video side of it, but it is something that you sign up for yearly through the conference to do. There was a question that, uh, what is the best video editing software uh, out there? What video editing do you recommend? And probably that's probably a question both for PC and Mac users. And on the cheap. Yeah, well, that's always the key. Um, yeah, we're, 
we're we're using um, Premiere Pro by Adobe here at uh, at Custer Road. Um, I know that uh, if you have a Mac, usually the um, the iMovie comes with that, um, which should be able to get you a, a majority of that. There are several different options um, from the the PC world, um, but like I said, we're we're primarily a PC based uh, church here, but we're using the Ado the Adobe Premiere Pro. But that is a uh, a yearly licensed and relatively expensive but exceptionally powerful tool. There is an alternative to Pro, um, which is called Premiere Rush, and it's basically made for super quick edits, um, like just just cutting video, adding simple graphics, and it provides all that within the software for you without having to do anything too complicated. It's got a simple interface. Um, uh, again, it's called uh, Pro Rush, and let me or Premiere yeah, Rush. Yeah, you that on there. Yeah, on. So this is the page for it. Um, if you just Google Premiere uh, Adobe Premiere Rush, um, you can do like a free trial. But if you decide to pay for it, it's just nine bucks a month, and I do think they offer nonprofit discount, but you have to check. Um, but it, I mean, it, it's it's a great tool that I've been using for just really quick stuff on the fly. And kind of to add on to that, um, as far as anything Adobe wise, uh, there are there's something called TechSoup uh, that we uh, that we are members of. I'm sure most churches are. Uh, I have I I have done the research, and when it comes to Adobe, it's just easier to go through Adobe, in my personal opinion. TechSoup has a lot of amazing things and I get a lot of discounts on some awesome software. Adobe, going straight through Adobe uh, versus going through TechSoup uh, has been what we found is useful uh, just for when you guys are setting up accounts. All right, I'm reviewing um, all of the, the, the chat questions. Um, and I feel like most of them have, have been addressed. And so now, um, uh, unless DJ Kyle or Jim, is there something else you want to share before I start opening it up for people to share their questions, um, by turning their camera off, mute, turning their zoom off mute. DJ. If, if it's okay, I mean, um, anybody here is more than welcome to email me, uh, any questions, I'll help as I can. Um, and we're actually going to <clears throat> share with you guys a little bit about if somebody has a question yeah. or if you want any particular help, um, we will share that at the end. So <clears throat> our tech people are so sweet and they're so kind to share their services. We're actually going to uh, create a small cohort or some small coaching that you can actually get and so I will talk about that at the end, if you guys will just hold tight just for a second um, while we get all the questions answered. So. All right. Is there a question that didn't get answered that someone wants to ask at this time? You can take your camera off Zoom, alpha mute, and go ahead and ask it. If there's no question, can I jump in right quick? Yes. I'm oh, is, that, is it Cliff? Yes. It's Cliff, I'm so work. glad you're there. I, I miss it, especially because your camera says you are Liliana Pena. Uh, you know, I, I uh, was wondering about that myself, but uh, <laughs> hey, you know, I'll, I'll take it. Well, Cliff, um, I'm so glad you're here and thank you for joining us. Cliff, uh, it, for those who don't know him, uh, he has been doing work with St. Luke Community UMC and is one of our invited uh, techs. And so, uh, I didn't see his name on there, but I'm, I'm glad you're joining us. So I'll turn it over to you, Cliff. Thanks for, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Um, this is kind of interesting. We've been doing this for about five, five and a half years. And I think it was uh, uh, Kyle who had the admission, something shall go wrong. Just it's something shall go wrong at all times. Uh, and I think you have to do is to try to work around that. Um, we got a pretty sophisticated system here. We were using TriCaster. Yeah, uh, you're going to need to say a lot of that again. You are breaking up very bad. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's see. Boom. 
they had to be the tech person and I didn't bring my microphone with me. Um, I'm at uh, St. Luke Community United Methodist Church. Uh, we have a relatively sophisticated system. Uh, we, use we drive it out to live stream and Facebook. Uh, they don't always work uh, perfectly. And so you've got to move people from one location to another. Uh, let me share a couple of thoughts with you. For folks who don't know me, you, some of you who've been around the market for a while are probably scratching your head going, this guy's kind of familiar. Um, my background is TV news. I was a reporter at both Channel 5 and 11 for years. Uh, so that's kind of my background. And so there's a relatively high level of production that I tried to bring to this uh, service. And, yes, I'm and sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. You're doing a lot of sound. You know, if you've ever done, seen the Charlie Brown thing or the teacher, you've been womp, 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 womp. You get a lot of that. I, yeah, it's breaking up on us, Cliff. And it was kind of interesting. Cliff said you 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 can expect problems, and as he said, you can expect problems. We were experiencing problems. We we're experiencing problems. This is uh, wow. I'm well, I don't a know little if it's bit the or, your, or your web connection, but it is. Um, um, I don't know which one issues. it is. I uh, ran out and I left my mic for this uh, uh, computer behind. I'm actually at the church where. What I ducked out before we went to record something and we're coming back. Um, we are a pre produced sermon, a pre produced program. Uh, so let me throw this out. And if you want, uh, Lillian or, or Owen, feel free to put out my email and I can share uh, some thoughts with you. There's three things that you should worry about if you're doing uh, production lighting. The easiest way that you can light someone is the CFM light bulbs. They have a wonderful, inexpensive, magnificent light. If it's too bright, move the light bulb back. That's point number one. Uh, I think you should pre-produce your programming. It, you have more control over it, and you're able to put a nicer piece together that Sunday morning looks better. Um, I, we use Adobe. It is complicated. Rush is much simpler. But Premiere Pro is very complicated if you don't want to work that hard. I personally think uh, the Apple products are probably your best bet in terms of simplicity. Uh, the other thing is try to keep your programming simple, but also make it interesting. So that it, it's, as I told my staff here when we first started, you can't do bad because people leave here and they go watch the NFL. And that's what they expect when they look at the screen. And so you've got to try to keep that in the back of your mind. You have to live up to what people are accustomed to seeing through either a computer or a TV screen. They don't accept less, even if it is church. And so you've got to put a little fire under yourself to do better and to work harder uh, at making it a better product. Um, and, you know, again, if you pre-produce your program, it, it's much simpler. And it doesn't matter whether it's a children's uh, a program or whether it is the Sunday service. Uh, you want to include all of the elements. Uh, we record them here in the sanctuary. Uh, we keep the numbers small. Four people singing is not the choir. <laughs> um, you can't, you know, you just can't do that. Uh, we actually are been around trying to figure out some stuff to do and we may pull that off, but you know, that's that it just falls short on that, but everything else you can do it, uh, prayers, uh, uh, announcements, what is, is easy is to take the elements, of what you've done in everyday life and try to create some graphic interfaces between the various elements so that it's a smooth transition. Um, we break each piece down into a separate video element. Uh, as I explained to someone, I said, well, we can put it all together into a 45 minute piece, but if something goes wrong, it all goes wrong. Uh, if you've got nine elements, well, okay, so you lost this. Um, we usually have a pastor here in the uh, sanctuary Sunday morning so you can jump in and do that element live if something goes bad. 
gives you that capability, but we've got the system for that. If you don't have that system, you've got to depend on making sure that you've got everything going well. Uh, again, keeping it simple, clean, direct way. And then I've got to run I've got to go for our, our sermon for this week. Thanks, Cliff. Uh, and I and I was saying, uh, just because it's pre-recorded doesn't mean it's not live. Meaning, uh, make sure you're engaging with people. Encourage people to pass the peace. Get prayer prayer requests. Greet people like you would if you're an usher. Hey, good to see you. Uh, and, and encourage that engagement. It's also a way of capturing uh, information as well. We've had a few more kind of questions come up, and uh, and uh, uh, DJ Kyle Jim want to. Turn it back over to you if there's something you want to share before we go back to other questions. No? Um, I was going to say, I, I like the point of uh, pre-recorded and then going with a premiere. It does allow you more control. I, I'm more partial to the live aspect of it because it feels real even with the mistakes and it also affords us the opportunity and one of the great things we've had with engagement is specifically mentioning people uh during the live stream so i give the pastor an ipad with comments that are coming up gives them their name which service they're watching and i say uh, i've coached them i've said you have to respond specifically to people say their name say what they said and then respond to it so we begin a lot of good engagement with pastor saying hey greg says good morning glad to be here greg we're so happy that you're here and then it keeps greg coming back uh, sunday in sunday out yeah and i've seen that especially as i've flipped around on some of our smaller churches that are taking in lots of prayer requests and, and are, are able to say you know johnny asked prayers for his mother and you know all those kind of good things so that's always seeking ways of how can you have more engagement more engagement more engagement and connection yep. and from a large large church standpoint um we have our communications team that that's what their engagement is on sunday morning during worship is to fill those chats and those kinds of replies and do that interaction just because trying to stay on some type of time frame depending upon how much uh impact you're getting back in as far as the comments you're not able to keep up with that from necessarily the the minister of the pulpit but it is it is highly, you know, even though we're recording our modern service, we still have those people that are online, live, handling those responses during that time, treating it as if it were a live event. And now we actually go for it, DJ. Yeah. And it may seem like a little thing. I have a, I've tasked out a specific set of like three people, and I call them my like team. And all they do is they have access to our official Facebook page. And I say, you don't have to comment, respond, just go through and like every single comment because when you see on your facebook page like imagine you like something at target and they made a post on facebook and you see that target liked your post it it kind of gives you a little bit of a warm feeling um so that's kind of the the thing that we were going for with that and it, it's gotten some great responses yeah that's actually similar to what we do is uh our our hospitality and our usher team uh actually runs point for that on us is that it's kind of that digital handshake that digital hello um we've we've tasked tasked them with that exact task is to say hello to people when they walk in the door um but do it digitally instead of by you know handshake so jackie if you can ask your question i'm, I'm not sure i quite grasp it uh so jackie. okay can you hear me yes okay so my so what i'm doing now is i'm i'm broadcasting from home we did do the uh, pre-recorded thing for Easter where we went into the sanctuary, recorded it. It was fantastic, except we didn't have a camera. So the person was hand-holding a tablet. So you can imagine uh, the, the moving around with the camera that went on. So, so while the sermon was good, um, you know, if the camera is shaking the whole time, you know, it's just, it just, it's distracting. So since then, I haven't done anything 
in the um, in the sanctuary. I do it all from home. I've kind of did my setup in my living room on my couch. It's church at home, and so we got that set up. What I'm using right now is my laptop to go Facebook Live, and I I do it that way because I mean because I don't have all of these personnel to you know to help me with that. So that's my concern. I'm just trying to work it out in my head. I would love to go back to the church and do it but I don't really have tech savvy people that can assist me. I have maybe one person that can help me. Um, so, so I'm trying to wrestle between, you know, I'm just trying to work it out. I'm trying to wrestle between how to do it in the sanctuary or how to do it at home, which camera to pur purchase and make sure we utilize all of this equipment for when we do get back into the sanctuary permanently. Yeah, those are those are great points, Jackie. I think the the easiest the the easiest win is there's definitely are you using your phone or an iPad to capture with? Right. No, actually, I started out with my phone, but it was the hardest thing to try to upload because okay. it, it was taking terrible time. So right now, I'm just using um, I have a uh, HP uh, pad that I'm using now. Gotcha. So they make some. Um, I, I know they make some very specific iPad. Like it's a mic stand. It's got a mic thread, a quarter inch mic thread that then has a holder on it. And I think they're like 20, 20 to 50 bucks, depending on how much padding you have on each one. Um, I can look that up here in a minute. But essentially, you just put it on a mic stand, um, put it in the middle aisle or wherever you are aimed at it, lock your device into it, and then aim it at it. Um, our organist actually does uh, several, uh, he's been doing some live recordings, just sitting at the piano and kind of playing, uh, throughout the week, um, uh, going Facebook live. And so that's how he does it. It's a one man band. Uh, he just yeah. puts that down, aims it at him, presses go. And, and you do, you, you see him like press go and kind of walk off to the side and sit down and play. But, it, uh, like DJ said, it, it gives that authenticity, authenticity to it, uh, that it, it is live, that you're real, that you're doing this with them. Um, and so that might be one option, uh, for you as far as going, doing it from your tablet device, um, or even using it from your laptop itself. Uh, as far as, uh, what I would call, uh, bad, bad money, um, as far as let's say you buy a, you buy a $30 camera from Walmart because you know, that's a, it's, it got four stars and, and it's a webcam. Well, that's great for the next X time that we're doing this remotely. But what is it? The great, that's a great question. What does that look like post when we're back in venue? Do you take that little camera and put it on the front pew and aim it at it? Well, there's nothing that says you can't. Um, I've got some friends who do that. They, they did it pre COVID that they literally take their iPad and they set it up front and they just capture it. They don't have a team. They just set it up and it's, it's what they have. It's the best they have. And that's what they're offering. Um, and what we've actually found is um, early on, um, we had a very, we had a smaller volunteer tech staff. And when we put out that we were looking for volunteers, there were people that were tech savvy that were eager to get in there and were like, hey, you know, I can't sing like you, or I should remember out of it. You don't want me to sing. And so, but I want to do, I want to serve. I want to be the hands and feet. And so they were like, oh, well, I can push a button. I can do that. And there's people I would imagine in your congregation that would be willing to sit there and push that button for you when you go back live, uh, when it's safe to have more people around. So I think there might be some good options in there. Um, they're, they're definitely, it, when, I, when I said about bad money, not to say that buying a, uh, a webcam is a bad purchase. Uh, it may just be something that, you know, that might be a purchase for COVID time, knowing that you're gonna buy a, a nicer camera for post COVID time to actually capture via HDMI or SDI. Does that help answer some of those questions, Jackie? It does. One more quick question. Um, Facebook course. Live, um, um, the option of having another person come in and say, maybe my, one of my, my worship leader could at her house play her piano and sing a song um, while I'm in my home and working that back in. I mean, I'm just trying to give various options to, to make this you know, a more fruitful enterprise. Uh, of course, yeah. You want more people. Um, I, I, the short answer, I think, uh, DJ, I think you were going to uh, jump in there, but I, I think the short answer is that you're probably going to have to go through a third-party software. I don't know that Facebook Live natively lets you have multiple people, but I could, I'm not a Facebook Live expert, uh, so I may be wrong. DJ? Uh, the easiest way 
to accomplish that without needing some extraneous amount of software would be to do the music pieces pre-recorded and play them before whatever you're going to do or wherever you'd like them. That's how we've been doing it for this time of quarantine because we're limited to the amount of people that we can have uh, in the building. So during the week, we've had small sets of people coming in, performing musical pieces, and then just piecing them into the, to the live experience. Okay, thank you. All right, what other questions do we have? Okay, I'm back. Somebody was going to check and see if there's a phone number for people to be able to dial in on the Facebook Live. Yep, Freddie. Uh, it's Kyle. I looked that up. Let me post that. Uh, I posted it early, early, early on. Um, and I'm going to put that in here. So it does look, so I do distinctly remember it rolling out. Um, I did just post that in there, Freddie, in the comments. Uh, so it's adding, so what Freddie's talking about is Facebook calls and adding a public dial-in number to your Facebook Live. So let's say you have a congregation that doesn't have uh, a lot of IT equipment or a nursing home, but someone wants to be able to still hear what's going on within the service. One option, not the only option by any stretch of the imagination, um, is Facebook Live. It says they're beta testing it now. Um, I know that they used it for Easter, so I, they may be working out some kinks. Um, and I know that Zoom also will do some of those features. So there are there are definitely places. Um, and Owen, you referenced a USB. Uh, you referenced a device earlier, I think, uh, that would also do that same thing. So uh, if you if you do a Google search uh, for public dial-in Facebook. Uh, there's a couple different options for that. So um, whichever one is the right shoe for your foot is, you know, what you go with. And so it may be the free version from Facebook. It may be the Zoom version. Uh, there, there, there are a couple options out there um, that uh, are sometimes free and sometimes cost you a little bit. Okay, thank you. Of course. Thanks, Freddie. Others? Well, hearing none. I have one. Yes. Um, I have a question. I know on Facebook Live, and I think it's on YouTube now, that you can add backup streams. And so that's something that I'm just getting into. On Sunday, we were streaming to three places, and two of them would work, but Facebook Live wouldn't. And I don't know anything about the backup streams. Do they automatically kick in if you've set them up in a recorder or an encoding program? We haven't dove too much into that, or at least backup streams for a single service. What we've done uh, is uh, the product that I, I described before, Restream, is what we use. It allows us to push to several different services at the same time. So if one is having a problem, we can redirect to one of the other two that is functioning properly. And the interface with Restream just comes with toggles for toggling on and off and changing specific settings in order to get that service back up and running. Gotcha. Right. Others? Yeah, we, uh, so Michelle, on we don't necessarily go that, uh, that direction, but I do know uh, we baited that last week with some decent success. If you get I'm going to try not to get in the weeds, which is super hard uh, for us tech people not to be in. Uh, but if you look up something called an RTSP URL, and I'll type that in the, the chat here momentarily. Um, uh, so for instance, I had someone Facebook Live, and they, from their phone, I grabbed their RTSP URL and pulled that into live stream. Uh, so our, our CDN, our content distribution network as a backup, as we were just testing it and it seemed to be functional. So you can also do that like with live stream, you can do that with OBS. Um, most of the time you're going to want to go with your strongest CDN, your strongest provider. So that's, we go straight to live stream and then it sends the multicasts down. Uh, so like for instance, DJ goes via OBS to Tell me who you go to, DJ. Sorry, I forgot. Restream. Restream and then back down versus hitting Facebook first because 
so many people are on Facebook that if Facebook goes down or your Facebook piece goes down and then that's going to YouTube and to your website, then everything's down. So we found personally going to either like a restream or like a, a main CDN provider uh, is the most secure uh, way to broadcast multiple ways. That does mean that there's an additional cost there. Uh, so we, we pay annually for our live stream account just as DJ pays annually or monthly for his. So there's a little bit of cost there, but you weigh that against having three different places that you're broadcasting, which not only is a safety net, but also reaching three different types of audiences um, that may be worth that $50 or $100 a month that you're spending on that outlet, if that makes any sense at all. Yeah, and remember that $500 grant that's available if you have not applied for that. I mean, that funds can be used for whether Jackie was needing some some hardware equipment to put her uh, tablet there on the uh, in the aisle or a subscription service uh, like the ones that they're speaking of, the $50 a month, you can apply it to there as well. Um, many of y'all have seen that meme that is uh, has the pastor that says, and just like that, we all became TV evangelists. Well, we are, uh, we, you're reaching people now that uh, have never stepped foot in your church, and that, that is going to continue in the future. Even as our churches start open up, everyone is anticipating a phased uh, opening up, and so we're going to continue to have people that, because of whatever reason, they are not going to feel comfortable or safe coming back into our sanctuaries or coming back into crowds. And so there's going to be people who are going to be accessing you through uh, your online presence. And so this is something that as you start opening up, uh, be in prayer about how to continue that. And if you're interested in going deeper and finding out, okay, how can we do more? Um, Liliana is going to share with you about how the Center for Church Development is going to put it together a cohort of persons who want to uh, be, start learning together to continue to improve their, uh, their online presence and, uh, and connect with some of our, our techs in a deeper way than today. So Liliana. Hi friends. Okay, so uh, as I shared with you earlier, we are trying to create a little cohort that will be able to get a geek or a tech person uh, connected with you to do three consultations with you. So we are going to do an initial consultation. Um, if you need help to set up online for your particular church, that uh, tech person will go out to your facility and help you set up and a follow-up check-in. But the only catch is, <laughs> that we are we do not want to teach our pastors okay yes our pastor can be there but we want to teach a person that in the future once we get back into the building that that person will be head of that piece because i know pastors currently you are doing all of the work and you are like uh, owen said you're a televangelist now, but um, we would really want to train someone, one leader that can take control of this. Because if we teach you as a pastor and you get moved, or if we teach you as a pastor, then you're going to have to be doing everything. So that is the catch that we are going to uh, do. We want to make sure that whoever it is that we're teaching, it could be you, but we also need one head person that is a lay person that we can teach. Okay, we, this will be paid by us. We will be giving the tech person a stipend. So all of my tech people currently online, if you are interested in helping us, we will give you a stipend for this. Contact me and we can uh, get all of that in order. But we do have currently two people that are ready and set to go to you guys, get connected. And we will be doing it as a cohort for me to check in with you and to make sure that you guys are getting what you need. Okay, so if you are interested in joining that group, being part of this cohort so that a tech person can come out to your church, uh, can it give you an initial consultation of what you need, how you need it, please email me. And on the subject line, Liliana, I need a tech person, okay? In my, I need a geek in my life. Okay, we all need those geeks in our lives, right? 
Okay, so that is the initial thing. If you really want that for your church, we are providing that for you. And so please contact me. Next thing I'm going to share with you, uh, my screen really quickly, I will send this list out to you guys. Do you see I've created this list. Everything that we've talked about today is in this little list. And I also have created for you an Amazon wish list. Okay, so on this particular list, if you click here, it's going to direct you to another um let me see do you can you guys see my screen on the amazon yes okay perfect so i have created a list for you guys here mtc church tech supplies and everything that we talked about is just a click away so anything that we talked about today that's why i was trying to kind of um link everything as we talked about some of the, our wonderful tech people sent this already to me but everything is linked and priced here for you so it's super simple and i uh, wanted to make sure that i have that for you here is the tripod little thing that we talked about uh here are the lights that we recommend the pretty affordable 90 dollars and some of the mics that our tech people also shared with us so i will share that um link um, and that, um, I'm sorry, that uh, list with you. On here, on the list, you will see as well, all of this is linked. So some of the stuff that they talked about, like the Logitech camera that I believe DJ talked about, that was a great bundle deal. That one is obviously not on Amazon, but you just go to this particular document and just click it and it'll direct you straight to where that is. And here at the bottom, I have also linked all of the software we talked about, okay? The um, wonderful tech software that we talked about, streaming, um, website engagement, the Apple iMovie Studio Switch, all of that is here for you. And I will make sure and um, load this up onto our chat here in just a second, and you guys can um, get it and if you need it, if you can't download it for some reason on here on our chat or anything, please let me know and I will email that list to you. Okay, so remember on that top thing, the Amazon list is currently there. You can just click and start shopping there directly. Okay, let's see. Um, I have a question. Can the tech person address the audio as well as the video? Um, John, can you give me a little bit more about your question. John. John K uh, asked, can the tech person address audio as well as video, the sound system? So I don't know exactly what John is referring to. John, do you want to just share? Uh, sure. Um, uh, we also have some uh, audio problems. Like, for example, in our uh, big sanctuary that we have, we also have the capability, or we had at one time years ago, to be able to pipe the system down into our fellowship hall, the audio of it. But we, we, no one can figure out how to um, turn the speakers on, for example. Or what's the, what is the best uh, uh, EQ uh, mixture for our sound system? Can a tech person help us with that? Uh, yeah, DJ, run, you, you run first. I'll, I'll follow up when you do. All right. Um, so audio, it can, it can get a little tricky. Um, there's no perfect EQ. Uh, any room that you go into is going to have different walls. It's going to bounce off walls dif differently. That's why uh, on staff, it's, it's good to have that guy who's good with the soundboard and, uh, even hiring an audio engineer to come in one time just to kind of get a feel for the room and get you set up with an EQ that's fit for you. It's like a fingerprint. It's going to be different for every room. Um, as far as sending a feed to a live stream or a, another area, that, that's also going to be a different set because what's going to work for one room is, again, is not going to work for the other. So you got to be prepared to send uh, a different unique feed. For us, we send something out from the back of our main soundboard to a separate soundboard that we mix differently for our live stream because it, it's not going to have the same 
effect as it does in a live room, which has its own reverb and its own sound. We add our own effects just to give it a little bit extra kind of oomph. But that's that's a little bit <laughs> up there. And I think that um, I know, Kyle, you're going to jump in just a second. And I know um, that it may be something that our tech person, um, if they go out to your congregation, um, if this is something that you want to do, they may be able to do that. Um, just kind of look at some of the components that you're dealing with for the current state that we're in. But also if you have maybe if they're there, if they have any more questions that you can utilize them for, I'm sure they are more than gracious to do that. Thank you. Yeah, one quick add on to, uh, to that is basically, um, and we, we DJ and Jim and myself are probably just I, I assume this when I jump on a call um, that right now what y'all are mixing for is only online when you come back. Um, like I can see Jim's uh, mixer behind him that he mixes a separate mix for broadcast just as DJ and I do for uh, what, what is different and live. So I have a, I have an audio console in the room that mixes for the speakers in the room. And then um, I have an audio console for what we call broadcast uh, that mixes for stream. So for right now, we're just using front of house and we're very intentionally having headphones on and listening to it from that standpoint. When we come back, we'll actually have two separate mixes. You can still use one mix. Uh, so John, for instance, like you could pull off of your front, what we would call a front of house mix, your, your room mix. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, there's verb, there's bounce. There's a lot of things that we could get super in the weeds for, um, that you're going to want to have, you're really going to want to have two separate mixes, uh, when you guys come back, if you continue to stream post, uh, right now it's okay to kind of pull off that one, but long-term you're going to want to have two separate mixes in order to have the best, uh, mix. And it really comes down to the music side of it. The, it does affect the sermon and the spoken pieces but it really, really boils down to music, um, especially if you're dealing with drums or any live instruments that might be loud. Um, they're gonna just be mixed. Um, it's gonna have an improper balance um, and it won't sound as good as what, what someone's expecting um, to hear when they go live in venue. Thank you, Kyle. Um, so again, just a reminder, the tech list is on the chat. And um, some of you shared with me that you couldn't see the list. So here's the Amazon. Once you click that, you will see the list here and everything there, um, list, everything for you, prices, just a click away. I feel like, a, you know, been selling some products. <laughs> so again, pastors, if you have any more questions or if you want to be part of that uh, cohort, part of that team where a tech person can go out to your congregation, um, can have that initial conversation with you, please email me. We are able to do that for you. And again, um, my fellow techs, if this is something that you're interested in, please let me know. Or if you know someone that currently um, would like to get some stipend for some tech work, that would be great. So thanks again for allowing us to help you. I'm going to turn it over to Owen. Again, if you have questions, please email me. I will, most of you know where my email is and how to reach me, yeah. but I will throw my email in there so you can reach me. Yeah, thanks Liliana and thanks Liliana for putting this together. Uh, Ken had asked about where the link is. Um, download right now before we close off the chat, the, uh, the PDF that Liliana had put on there, all those links, the Amazon wish list, all those links are on that tech list, that PDF file that is in the chat line. So, um, uh, before we get off, make sure that you, you download that, uh, Cliff, Jim, Kyle, DJ, thank you so much. This was so informative, so helpful for all of us. Uh, we had about 60 people uh, at our high today, and so I know that it was blessed uh, by many, and I heard messages from other people that couldn't make it this hour, but they're going to be watching the recording of this, and so your help is going much beyond uh, this group and this group, how many people that they are reaching. Literally thousands of people have been helped on by your service today, and we thank God for you, that your ministry in your local church, and especially today, your ministry beyond your local church and uh, in the North Texas Conference and beyond. And so I'm going to ask everyone if we can give our presenters a round of applause. And, and thank you, Liliana, for your organization with this, um, the CCD team at Temple, 
uh, S. Diana Masters and Liliana, and we thank all of you for joining us. And I have asked Catherine Strimke if she will uh, close us all in prayer. Catherine? I have a saying that I use uh, not just with staff, but also with family, and that is, do you know what the number one problem in corporate America is? And the answer is communication. Do you know what the number one challenge in marriage is? Communication. Do you know what we spend most of our time in the church trying to do? Communication. And uh, sure have been having a crash course in the technical side of communication. So, gracious God, we know that we can turn to you no matter. But in the meantime, we're trying to communicate your word to the world, your love for each person who might find us. And so teach us communication. Teach us not only the technology, but teach us the love. So that in everything, even computers and online services, the name of Jesus may be praised. Amen. <laughs>